Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can. And you do that by coming up with the answers that no one else could think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, my name's Serge. This is my wife, Parry. We're both optometrists from Manchester. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Phil. This is my school friend, Stephen. I'm from Glasgow and he's from Liverpool. Couple number three. Hi, my name is Carrie. This is my fellow Ginger Ninja Gemma, and we're friends from London. And finally, couple number four. My name's Debbie. This is my husband, Simon, and we're from sunny Torquay in Devon. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A warm welcome. We'll chat later. Now, just time to introduce one more person. See you later, arbitrator. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hiya. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Just one returning pair from the last show, that is Gemma and Carrie. Welcome back. Lovely to have you here. Knocked out in round two last time. But three new pairs. I know. Uh, and what a great jackpot round we had last time. Keith and Georgie walked away with £4,000. Yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> Question two today, round two. It's a lovely one, round two. Round two, you're going to enjoy. Round one, Ooh. you might enjoy, <gasps> but I can't guarantee it. But round two, you will enjoy. You won't enjoy any of them, because you've, you've got to come up with answers. <laughs> That's true, yeah. true. Well, thank you very much, Pleasure. indeed. Uh, yeah, Georgie and Keith won the jackpot last time, which means today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. There it is. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, just remember this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will get eliminated. So just keep your scores nice and low and you'll be fine. Very best of luck to all four pairs. OK, our first category today is... Famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our question concerns people who got a new job in 2018. Oh. Sounds fun, Richard. Yeah, uh, on each board we're going to show you descriptions of seven people, all of whom got a new job in 2018. We'll give you their initials as well. Can you uh, find the lowest scoring of these, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, so we are looking for these people, all of whom got a new job in 2018. Here is our first board of seven. And we have got ANC leader who took office as President of South Africa in February 2018, CR. DJ announced in October 2018 as host of the Radio 2 breakfast show, ZB. Norwegian appointed caretaker manager of Manchester United in December 2018, OGS. Newcastle-born singer who became a dance captain on the TV talent show The Greatest Dancer, C. US musician appointed chief conductor designate of the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra, MA. Absolutely fabulous star who took over as host of the BAFTA Film Awards, JL, and MP appointed Home Secretary in April 2018, SJ. Let me read all of those again. ANC leader who took office as President of South Africa in February 2018, DJ announced in October 2018 as host of the Radio 2 Breakfast Show, Norwegian appointed caretaker manager of Manchester United in December 2018, Newcastle-born singer who became a dance captain on the TV talent show The Greatest Dancer, US musician appointed chief conductor designate of the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra, Absolutely fabulous star who took over as host of the BAFTA Film Awards and MP appointed Home Secretary in April 2018. Serge, welcome. Good to have you here from Manchester. Yes. What do you do in Manchester, Serge? Uh, I'm an optometrist. How long have you been optometristing? Oh, 29 years <gasps> since we met at university all those many oh, moons ago. That's a lot We've of eyes. We've been a long time as well, haven't we? Uh -huh. And we ran this practice in, in Lee and it's... Uh, and it's thriving. Room together. Thriving. It is. It's, we have a number of patients, probably 27, 28,000 patients now. That is extraordinary. 56,000 eyes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot. No, yes. odd number there. <laughs> yeah, get the odds one with one eye. <laughs> one I, eye. I see what you're saying. Go <laughs> ahead. Oh, <yeah>. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, Serge, our uh, people who took on new jobs in 2018, what are you, okay. uh, you going to um, go for here? I'll go for the bottom one. I think that's Sajid Javid. Sajid Javid says Serge. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Serge and went for Sajid Javid. It is Sajid Javid. Down it goes to 23. Not bad at all, Serge. Great start to the show. Well done. 
Well played, Serge. Very nice start. Yeah, he's our age, Sajid Javid. And yet, look at him. And look at us uh, doing this. He's done right for himself, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, Stephen, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you here. Uh, you are here from Liverpool. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, what do you do in Liverpool, Stephen? I'm an IT manager for a company that's sort of like Dragon's Den. So we... That must be a nightmare. What are your duties there? Well, they range from looking after servers, we host all the soft stuff for them, mm -hmm. also unblocking urinals, anything to do with plumbing, <laughs> um, fixing roofs, <laughs> uh, microwaves, dishwashers, <laughs> and computers, of course. Wow. It's a bit of everything. That's not what I thought IT managers did. <laughs> I thought that... Do you know what? Genuinely, yeah. when he said, I'm an IT manager, I thought he said, I'm a nighty manager. <laughs> and... <laughs> I was wondering what it was. Yeah. Someone who manages 90s. Look, uh, looking after the 90s. Got to, got to Someone's them, got to do it. Keep them in shape. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, now, Stephen, have you got any ideas from this, uh, yeah. this board um, of... Go for the Newcastle-born singer, um, mm -hmm. Cheryl. Cheryl. You're going to go for Cheryl. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Cheryl. It is right. Down he goes to 50. Yeah, she's just called Cheryl now. Yeah. Said all sorts of names over the years. Tweedy, Cole, the other one, which I forget. Yes. Uh, now just Cheryl. One it's person Cheryl. at our poll said Chico. <laughs> <laughs> which is a nice answer. Thank you very much. Um, Carrie, welcome back. Welcome back. No, it was round two last time. Oh, you were within touching distance. Yeah. Um, remind us what you do, Karen. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in criminology, so I'm a doctor of crime. Uh, is that higher or lower than a Napoleon of crime? I can't remember. <laughs> um, it's lower than. It's I, lower I, than. I strive to be uh, Napoleon okay, well, of crime. Good. Nice, to have, <laughs> nice to have ambitions. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, what are you going to go for on this? Um, I'm going to go for the Norwegian appointed caretaker manager of Manchester United in December, as Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Down to 34. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Well played, Carrie. Yes, yeah, started out with eight wins uh, on the trot. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, first Man United manager ever to do that. It didn't continue, but um, <laughs> it was nice a start. very, very good start. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Simon, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Simon. I'm a design manager uh, for the West Country division of a well-known house builder. OK. I'll tell you what you haven't told us, Simon, though, is uh, what your surname is. Uh, we do have an interesting surname, yes. Yeah. Christmas is oh, our surname. Oh, that's yes. nice. That's, that's nice. nice. <laughs> It's not so nice when you're going through school. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was no. slightly what more your, torturous. What were, what were the nicknames? I'm happy, um, obviously. <laughs> the obvious ones. One of them was Easter Bunny, which they were going through all the That's references. Right. You know. <laughs> I wasn't so keen on that one, to be fair. Um, Have you got kids? Yes. Uh, did you give them sensible names? Um, Don't say Mary. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, no. Sen sensible names. Um, OK, now, Simon, you are the last person to have this board. Mm. Uh, do you feel like talking us through it? Um, I can talk you through two of them. The DJ is Zoe Ball and the Ab Fab star is Joanna Lumley. It's a case of which one's the lower out of those two. It's plump for Zoe Ball. OK, you're going to go for Zoe Ball. Yes, please. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Zoe Ball. Oh! That's our high score there, but still, 81. It's better than 100, Simon. Yes, that double whammy of being very famous and having initials that... Uh, yeah. ..sort of having a Z at the start of your yeah. name. She's the first ever um, Radio 1 breakfast show female presenter and the first ever Radio 2 female breakfast show presenter. It's quite an impressive That's double, really isn't it? Yeah. Um, shall we fill in the rest of this board? Yes. Uh, the top one is Cyril Ramaphosa. Well done if you said that. Would have scored you seven. Now, do you know the uh, the chief conductor designate? It's the sort of thing you might know. She was a protege of uh, Leonard Bernstein. It's Marin. Marin Alsop. Alsop. There you go. Don't there say it just after Good. I say it. <laughs> it. You could have said anything, and I would have. Uh, that's one point, and you're quite right about Joanna Lumley, but a big scorer. Joanna Lumley would have scored you 69, so Marin also the best answer. Well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through our first round. Let's have a look at those scores. 23 is our lowest score. Well done, Serge. 
and Parry looking very strong there. Then we travel up from there to 34, where we find Carrie and Gemma. Then up from there to 50, where we find Stephen and Phil. And 81 is where Simon and Debbie Christmas are. Yeah, we need a low score, is basically what I'm saying, Debbie. Sure. So good luck with that with the next pass. OK, we can come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues up on the board. Who are all these people who got new jobs in 2018? And we have got, on our second board, Olivier Award winner who began playing Evelyn Plummer in Coronation Street, ML, former presenter of Top Gear who became host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, JC, politician elected co-leader of the Green Party with Jonathan Bartley, SB, journalist announced as David Dimbleby's successor on Question Time, FB, Oscar-nominated actor cast as Princess Margaret for the third series of The Crown, HBC. BBC Six music DJ who began hosting Desert Island Discs on a temporary basis, LL. And X Factor winner who joined the West End cast of Chicago playing Roxy Hart, AB. I'll read those again. Olivier Award winner who began playing Evelyn Plummer in Coronation Street. Former presenter of Top Gear who became host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Politician elected co-leader of the Green Party with Jonathan Bartley. Journalist announced as David Dimbleby's successor on Question Time. Oscar-nominated actor cast as Princess Margaret for the third series of The Crown. BBC Six music DJ who began hosting Desert Island Discs on a temporary basis. And X Factor winner who joined the West End cast of Chicago playing Roxy Hart. There we are. Debbie... Welcome to Pointless. Good to Thank have you here. You. Uh, Debbie, what do you do? I am in hospitality, actually. I'm sort of winding down at the moment, so I've worked a fair few years. So now I just do a couple of days in hospitality. In hospitality, at a, is that at a, a, sort of a venue or is it a, a specific place? It's or? a beautiful restaurant in Torquay that overlooks the sea. Oh, how nice. So I mean, it's a couple of days a week just gazing at the sea. So what, what do you get up to on the, on the other days when you're not there? Um, I have a fascination, actually, for uh, cr true crime thrillers and series mm. and forensics and CSI. Have, and... You, have you been chatting with Carrie at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, but well, we shall. Well, there we are. <laughs> Very good. Now, Debbie, what are you going to go for? We need a low score from you on this board, remember. Yeah. Um, I think I am going to have to go for the second one down. Jeremy Clarkson. OK, well, you're the highest scorers, so uh, there's no red line for you. You just have to hope this goes a long way down. You have gone for Jeremy Clarkson. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. <laughs> That's a high score. 83, taking your total up to 164. Yeah, Jeremy Clarkson is the right answer. He's very good at it as well. Yeah, and sometimes I always look at the wrong answers on the polls, like we had Chico before, and sometimes you can tell it's people trying to guess or sometimes it's people, you know, who just don't know. And sometimes you can tell someone's just had a brain freeze and made a mistake. Because one of our hundred answered Jeremy Corbyn to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Thank you. Uh, Gemma. Hello. Uh, Gemma, welcome back. Um, remind us all about yourself, Gemma. Uh, so I work as an administrator at Imperial College London in the Faculty of Medicine. I deal with our uh, postgrad students, uh, more the admin side. I'm a spreadsheet Excel lover. I'm one of those crazy people who actually enjoys using uh, spreadsheets. No, if I understood spreadsheets, I bet I'd enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet I would. Um, so, apart from spreadsheets, what else thrills you, Gemma? <laughs> uh, I've kept myself pretty active. Uh, as an adult, I suppose is the best way to put it. Uh, I was part of a big social group for many years. I uh, had the opportunity to do things like dragon boat racing, abseiling, skydiving, dinner shuffles, balls. Going okay, I uh, stopped right there. Dinner, <laughs> dinner shuffles? <laughs> What's that? Uh, very simple. Uh, group of people uh, sit down, you have your starter chatting, and then in between each course, you just move around. Oh, no. Start chatting different people, different things. No, 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 no. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anyone. It's it's quite good. Yeah, but then you know someone, and then you have to, and then you think, oh, phew, I know someone, and you have to go to talk to someone else. <laughs> oh, that that's sounds true. like a terrible idea. How big's the? How many people are there? Oh, it varies. It could be six, could be twenty. At a restaurant. In a restaurant, yeah. So that means you've got to move your napkin, <laughs> your glass, your wine glass. You've got a lot, and the knife and butter oh. plate. And everything. You've got to, there's a it lot of stuff you've got to move fluid around. Than that when you I would it. honestly it rather go skydiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Anyway, listen, great news for you, Gemma. Whatever you score, it won't be higher than the Christmases, so you are safe. Gemma, what would you like to go for? Um, quite 
glad in some ways pressure's off because it's a little bit of a guess, but going with the uh, six music DJ and the letters, I'm going to go with that one and say Lauren Laverne. Lauren Laverne says, Gemma, no red line for you, you're already through. How many of our 100 people said Lauren Laverne? Is right. And look at that, down to 10. Lowest score so far, in fact, Gemma. Very well done indeed. 44 is your total. Well played, Gemma. Another very good answer, Lauren Laverne. She used to be in a very good band, Lauren Laverne, called Kinnicky. Yeah. 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 Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, OK, now, Phil, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Um, school friend of Stevens. Yes. Now living in Glasgow. Yes. Um, how long have you been a Glaswegian? I've been a Glaswegian for, oh, cracky, 25 years now. In fact, it's amazing, because you could... <laughs> that sounds yeah. just like yeah, it. You yeah, you do. Yeah. It's, sound, you're like, it's my, like we've got my Billy wife, Connolly here. My wife and daughter fall about the floor laughing <laughs> when I try and do a Scottish accent. I'm, I'm definitely not going to try one here, by the way. <laughs> OK. Uh, Phil, what do you do? I'm a dentist. Did you always want to be a dentist? I... I wanted to be a student for as long as possible. And <gasps> dentistry fitted the bill quite nicely for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was either that or medicine. I mean, medicine, it was, that's yes, quite long. It was one of the two. Or um, veterinary. Oh, was it veterinary? That yeah. goes on forever, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Phil, what would you like to go for? I think I'll try the journalist announces David Dunby's successor, and I think that's Fiona Bruce. Fiona Bruce, says Phil, no red line for you. You're also already through. Let's see how many people said Fiona Bruce. Down it goes to 50. <laughs> there we are, 50. Not bad at all. Exactly the same score as Stephen, in fact. And there you are on 100. Uh, well played. She's born in Singapore, Fiona Bruce. She does my favourite show, which is that one about the fake paintings. Yes. That cool. I, I, I love, love that show. Oh, the, the fake painting roadshow. That's nice. But, yeah, but what is? <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> Something or other, isn't it? Fake or Fortune. Oh, Fake or Fortune. Fake or Fortune. I love oh, that show. Yes. yes. When, she, when they gave a question time, I thought, I hope this doesn't affect Fake or Fortune in <gasps> any way. Has so it? I, Oh, I don't think so. I th hopefully she hasn't become a little bit more. Yeah, punchy come on. on! Is that a Picasso or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you, Richard. Uh, now, Parry. Parry. Uh, welcome to Parry. Sorry, I was just thinking, Surge and Parry. <laughs> that sounds like fencing moves. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Surge and Parry. Oh, yeah, oh. very nice. Uh, sorry, Parry. Welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here. Um, you. I know all about you. I know. I know what you do. Optometrist is 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 what you do. Did did you and Surge meet at optometry college? We certainly did, Alexander. Um, yeah, Surge was doing a physics degree and obviously decided that optometry was a, a better option. So he converted to optometry after we got married. Oh, how? So, so you converted him? And yes, I converted him. I mean, it was either that or you went to physics, I guess. But no, mm, optometry mm, was the uh, mm, no. was the thing. Uh, yes, optometry was the, the, the career of choice. The career. So, and look, yes. and here you are. Oh, yeah. You made a huge success of it. Um, mm -hmm. So then, uh, what are you going to go for, Parry? Uh, no red line for you again because you're you're already through. But talk us through this board if you fancy it. Okay. Well, I think the top one's Maureen Lipman. Uh, I think. The Oscar-nominated actor is Helena Bonham Carter. And I think I'm going to go for the bottom one. I, I'm hoping that's um, Alexandra Burke. And that's going to be your answer? It is. OK, as I say, no red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Alexandra Burke. It is. Down he goes to 21. Very well done indeed. Taking your total up to 44. Well played, two scores of 44 there. You were quite right about Maureen Lippmann as well. Actually would have been a slightly uh. smaller score. Would have scored you 15 points. Oh. Well done if you said Maureen Lippmann. Um, SB, one of the Green Party leaders, is Sean Berry, yeah. is the right answer. Would have scored you five points. Uh, and you're quite right about HBC as well. That is Helena Bonham Carter. And that would have scored you 42 points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our first round, which means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. I can't bear it. It's the Christmases. <laughs> They're literally the last people I wanted to send home. I'm so sorry. Uh, Debbie and Simon, it's been lovely having you here. Do you think you they're going to come Thank back you. tomorrow with the surname Boxing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for playing. Thank we you. are looking forward to seeing you next time. Debbie and Simon. Thank you very much. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And so we are down to three pairs. Very well done, all of you. You made it through the first round. Best of luck to all three pairs. The category for round two today 
is pets. <laughs> you can all decide in your pairs on that basis. Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of Britain's top 100 dogs mm. as they could. Richard. There was a TV show called Britain's Top 100 Dogs. The public voted on their favourite dog breeds in the UK. We're looking for any of the top 100, so any of the top 100 dog breeds in the UK. And that's 2019, that poll. OK, 2019. So, yeah, basically name a dog. Name a dog. Yeah. Very But good. not like Max. <laughs> <laughs> Very tactful of you there and clever and thoughtful to say Max because uh, most people would have said Rex, that's... but you were nice enough to remember that my oldest son is called Rex. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's just like... how... You are literally like a mind reader. What a, what a gentleman you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, so we're looking for dog breeds, but remember, obscure is what we're after. Serge, coming to you first. OK, um, I'll, I'll go for Cockapoo. Cockapoo. Let's see, Cockapoo, is it right? How many of our 100 people said Cockapoo. It's right. <laughs> 16. Very well done indeed, Serge. Well played, Serge. It actually came second in the vote, oh. right up the top there. And it's lovely because the name Cockapoo uh, it unites the nation because everyone under 12 is giggling currently and everyone <laughs> over 12 is also giggling. So that's yeah. nice. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Richard. Uh, Phil? I think I'll try Dachshund. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Dachshund. <laughs> Down it goes to 20. Very good indeed, Phil. Um, yeah, came 18th in the poll, the uh, Dachshund, Dachshund. Dachshund are now called Nissan, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, now, Gemma. We did have dogs when I was little, and we did have one sort of particular breed. I don't know if it'd be top 100. OK, I think I'll go a little safer. Uh, I'll say uh, West Highland Terrier. West Highland Terrier, says Gemma. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for West Highland Terrier. It's right. <laughs> 20 is our high score currently, 16 is our low. You pass 20, you pass 16, down to 11, very well done. Uh, yeah, officially the West Highland White Terrier, but uh, West Highland Terrier or Westie. Uh, West Highland White Terrier won Crufts in 1976, 1990 and 2016, but not the same dog. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be going at some point. That would it? be. Because, of course, if you win Crufts three times, you get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, we're halfway through our second round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. 11, the low score there. Well done, Gemma. Uh, then up to 16, where we find Serge and Parry. Then up to 20, where we find Phil and Stephen. Uh, it's a little bit high, but not, not ludicrously. But nice low score from you, Stephen. Wouldn't hurt in the next pass. So, uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Carrie, remember, we're looking for any breed of dog that appeared on the shortlist of 100 dogs. Um, I'm going to say an English setter. An English setter, says Carrie. Um, here is your red line. Get below that and you're through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many of our 100 people said English setter. Very well done. That's down to one. <laughs> Very strong indeed. That takes your total up to 12. Well done. <laughs> Very well played. Came 30th in the vote as well, the English setter. I'm not sure I know an English setter. No, unless it's an examiner, I suppose. Um, oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. OK, now, Stephen. Dogs. I'll go for miniature schnauzer. Miniature Schnauzer, says Stephen. No red line for you, you're currently the high scorers, but let's see how far down the board you get with Miniature Schnauzer. <laughs> there are, down to four. Very well done indeed. 24. 
Well, Blade came 12th in the votes. Also, the, the punchline of a very funny joke. Miniature schnauzer. Um, you can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> This is a lovely round, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. Especially there's it's lots nice. of people sitting at home with, uh, with their dogs, dogs whose breed has not been uh, mentioned yet. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, now, Parry, 16 is your current score. <sighs> Seven is your target. Oh, crikey. This is for a place in the head-to-head. -head. Mm. I shall go for... Um, Sharpay? Sharpay. It's a, it's a pen, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sharpay. Here is your red line. There it is. If you get below that red line, you are in the head to head. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sharpe. Oh. oh, bad luck, Parry. Oh. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 116. Sorry, Parry, not in that top 100, I'm afraid. Less popular, of course, because they tend to leave a permanent mark on your carpet. <laughs> I think is the, uh... <laughs> oh, um, now, let's take a look at some pointless answers, though. Borzoi, Boston Terrier, English Bull Terrier. There's the Manchester Terrier, Newfoundland Huggle. Rough Collie. Samoyed, uh, the Celium Terrier. Let me give you some other pointless ones as well. Gordon Setter. Uh, you could have had the Irish Water Spaniel, the Leon Burger. I thought that's mm, a that delicious. fast food, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's a... <laughs> You could have had the English Bull Terrier as well. All sorts of pointless answers there. Very well done if you said any of those. Do you know what won Britain's most popular dog? Britain's most popular dog? Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkshire Terrier. i tell you what, they have a is bad it... reputation, but they're the loveliest dogs you'll ever meet. Rottweiler. Um, oh, is it the uh, French Pug? No. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Oh, Staffy was yeah. number one on that list. That was... Those are the most popular dogs. These are the answers that most of our 100 people said. Top three. You would have scored 37 for Poodle, 42 for German Shepherd, and Labrador would have scored you 71. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we find ourselves at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another couple, and I'm afraid, Parry and Serge, it is you this time to say goodbye to. We will see you again next time. Look forward to that very much. Thanks so much, Thank meantime. You. Parry you. and Serge. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Gemma and Carrie, Stephen and Phil. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for that jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. It's going to be a close one, I think. Well, I think it might well think be. It's been good so far. Absolutely. But Gemma and Carrie, it's the last time we're going to see them. Last if I was time. them, I'd be wanting to get through, wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, listen, you're allowed to confer, as you know, this time round, which is good. You can chat before you give your answers. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Uh, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head to head. OK, here is your first question, and it concerns... UK cities containing five letters or fewer in their names. Mm. Richard. I'm going to show you five photographs now of cities with five letters or fewer in their names. We'll also show you the initial of each of those places as well. Can you name these cities? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our cities. Here they come. A. Y. B, N. C, P. D, E. And E, B. Very pretty, very pretty cities, aren't there? Yeah, They're lovely. There we are. OK, right, so Gemma and Carrie, you're our low scorers, so you get to go first. Oh, I'm not sure. It's five or fewer, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a city. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a little gamble from our perspective. Um, so we know a couple, but they're going to be really high scoring. Um, so we're going to little guess on D and say Ely. 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 Say Gemma and Carrie. Now, Stephen and Phil, do you fancy talking us through the others? Um, we think A is York, B is Total Gas Newry, um, E, Bath, or I think, I'm going for C. Yeah, we'll try C. C, yeah. Perth. 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 
her, say Stephen and Phil for C. Um, OK, so we have Gemma and Carrie saying Ely. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ely. It's right. Down it goes to 24. <laughs> Very good. Stephen and Phil, meanwhile, have gone for Perth for C. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Perth. Look at that. Down it goes to nine. Very well done indeed. Stephen and Phil, that was a gamble worth taking. It means after one question, you are up 1-0. Uh, beautifully played, gents. Yeah, very nicely done. Let's eliminate the two biggest scorers first, shall we? A, you're quite right, is York. Very big scorer, though. Would have scored you 82 points. And E, as well, you said, was Bath. And you're right about that. And Bath would have scored you 44. But the lowest scorer on the board is B. Our friends here were absolutely right. It is Newry in Northern Ireland. Very well played. Two points. Very well done if you said that at home. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so, here comes your second question. Gemma and Carrie have to win this one to stay in the game. Stephen and Phil get to answer it first. Our second question today is all about bananas. <laughs> Brilliant. Richard. Yeah, five <laughs> clues about bananas or things related to bananas. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Indeed. OK, let's reveal our five clues. Here they come. Name of the body part that is used as a term for a bunch of bananas. British star of My Best Friend's Wedding, whose 2006 memoir is entitled Red Carpets and Other Banana Skins. Name of the car that goes bananas in the title of the 1980 Disney film. Alcoholic spirit that is traditionally used to make a banana daiquiri cocktail. And banana land is a slang term for this Australian state. I'll read those again. Name of the body part that is used as a term for a bunch of bananas. British star of My Best Friend's Wedding, whose 2006 memoir is entitled Red Carpets and Other Banana Skins. Name of the car that goes bananas in the title of the 1980 Disney film. Alcoholic spirit that is traditionally used to make a banana daiquiri cocktail. And banana land is a slang term for this Australian state. There we go. Stephen and Phil. You go first. Um, I think we're going to go for the British star of My Best Friend's Wedding, Rupert Everett. Rupert Everett, say Stephen and Phil. Now then, Gemma and Carrie. Do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Um, I, yeah, so I think uh, for the name of the body uh, would be either sort of, well, you just said a fist, a fist of bananas. Um, the car, I think, is Herbie Goes Bananas. Uh, the spirit uh, for a daiquiri is rum. rum. Um, Banana Land for Aussie State? It's not no one. Idea. I know, no. So, uh, what do you want to go for? Herbie or rum? Let's go Herbie. Name of the car. That goes bananas. Okay, Herbie, Herbie goes, bananas. goes bananas. So, we have Rupert Everett and Herbie. Uh, Stephen and Phil went Rupert Everett. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Very well done, that's right. And down he goes to eight. Very well done. Look at that. Gemma and Carrie, meanwhile, have gone for Herbie, the name of the car that goes bananas. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Herbie. It's all bad luck. Good answer, great film. But that means after two questions, Stephen and Phil, you win that point and you are through to the final 2 0. What a performance. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah, Herbie's actually the highest answer on the board, <laughs> but nothing would have saved you because no, uh, Rupert Everett right. was the best answer up there. What do you think the body part that's a uh, bunch of bananas? It's a, I think, it, is, it a, is it a fist? Doesn't sound right, but it's got to be hand. fingers, hand. hand. Yeah, yeah. hand. A hand of bananas. That would have scored you. 38. The alcoholic spirit. Uh, white rum. Quite right about that. Rum, a white rum. Would have scored you 22 and Banana Land, this slang. I mean, choose an Australian state, I suppose. They grow a lot of bananas in Australia. It is Queensland. Queensland. Oh, Queensland. There Queensland. We are. And Queensland would have scored you 12. Very good. Thank you. So, leaving us at the end of the head to head round, I'm afraid Gemma and Carrie, uh, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, back you've come, taken it thus far, and you came in as our golden couple. Um, but I'm afraid this is the end of the road. This is where we have to say goodbye. It's been lovely having you on. Thank you Thank so much, you. Gemma and Carrie. Time for Stephen and Phil. It is now time for our pointless final.
Now, congratulations, Stephen and Phil. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,000. There it is. Well, just a stealth raid on Pointless today. Just in for the one show and then back, which is just as well, Stephen, given all the jobs you're doing in the IT department. <laughs> it doesn't sound like they could spare you for much longer. So this is, this is good news. Uh, is anything you particularly like to see come up in this last round? Anything by the first album by the Stone Roses? For me, anything by the other. <laughs> OK, very good. So very much music-based music yeah. at this stage. OK, well, as ever, you get to choose your category from the, the list we put up on the board. Uh, let's find out what today's selection looks like. We have got... A Star is Born casts... Fashion... Florida... <laughs> astronauts. <laughs> well, geez, we could just be anything on that, couldn't it? I think go for Florida. Do you think so? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? Go Florida. Yeah, OK, go Florida. Florida. Florida it is. OK, best of luck, gents. Three very different questions about Florida here. Hopefully one of these will suit you. Uh, we're looking for any of the following, please. We are looking for any of the county seats of Florida. That means Florida is split into 67 counties, so any town or city that is uh, the capital of one of those, so big towns and cities of Florida, essentially. We are looking for the name of any of the top Florida sports teams. That's in the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, MLB and MLS. So that is the, the top professional leagues in basketball, ice hockey, American football, baseball or Major League Soccer. So any of those teams, please. Or we are looking for any UK top 40 singles featuring Flo Rida well, uh, cool. up to March 2019. Well, that's easy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. And to win that jackpot, all you need is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Remember, you don't have to answer all three categories, just focus on whichever categories you like the look of. Are you ready? OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, yeah, so... Miami, Miami Marlins, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got Miami Heat, yes, Fort yeah. Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa Bay... Yeah, Tampa Bay, um, Bay right now. The keys, Florida Keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really know the Florida geography. So I don't know the Flow Rider, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I think we can rule out Flow Rider. Rule out Flow Rider. So you got some good sports teams there, didn't you? Miami yeah. Marlins, uh -huh. Miami Heat. Yeah, they should um, be. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. yeah. Might still yeah. be going, I'm not sure. Um, what about nothing. county seats? You mentioned Florida Keys. What are the Florida what Keys. regions of Florida we could think of? Sunny ones. Yeah, they're all sunny ones. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what's, which one's... Maine should... isn't Florida, is it? No, no. Um, so which one should we go for? I think she has the sports team. I think we've got the best chance of those. Guys. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ten yeah. seconds left. Miami Marlins. Yes. Miami, and the Miami Heat. OK, yeah. But go with that. I think we're good to go with that. Go with that, sweet. OK. OK, that sounds like you've made your mind up uh, just ahead of the clock running <laughs> out there. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just say which category. Sorry, Florida just... sport teams. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, same again, Miami Heat. Miami Heat. And Miami Marlins. And Miami Marlins. So all three in the sports teams category. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? I'd say Miami, Miami Marlins. Miami Marlins will put last, least likely to be pointless. Probably Miami Heat, I'd say. Miami, Miami, Miami Heat we put first. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Miami Heat. Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Miami Marlins. There we are. Now, if one of these were to win that jackpot for you, what would you do with your thousand quid, Stephen? Well, we've just moved house with my wife and stepdaughter, Deborah and Jade, so they're both vegetarians, so it's a well-known vegetarian restaurant in Manchester I'll take them to. Very nice indeed. Phil, what about you? Well, my daughter, Ella, her next birthday, she turns 17, so I know she's already got me earmarked for allocating money for her first car. Right. OK, you better win. You had better win. OK, well, best of luck. Um, your three answers there, they look lovely from where I'm standing, but let's find out what our 100 people make of them. Your first answer was Miami Heat. In all these cases, we were looking for Florida sports teams in case of all three answers you've given. Uh, Miami Heat is your first. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Well, it's right. Down it goes, edging slowly through the 30s. We're into the 20s. We've cleared the 20s into the teens. 16, not bad at all. Good start. Good start. Good start. Good start. 
16 for Miami Heat. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. This for the £1,000 jackpot. Your first answer was Miami Heat, took us all the way down to 16. Your second answer, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, takes us down into single figures, stopping at eight. <laughs> well, you've ordered them perfectly so far. <laughs> it's all moving in exactly the right direction. Eight for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's hope you can go right down to zero with your third and final answer, the Miami Marlins. This you thought was probably your best shot at a pointless answer. Let's hope it scores nothing. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Miami Marlins. Your first answer, Miami Heat, took us a 16. Your second answer, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, down to eight. The Miami Marlins now taking us down into single figures, passing it, still going down to five. Well, I have to say, you ordered those absolutely beautifully. No fault to be found there, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you won't win today's jackpot. That will roll over onto the next show, but it's been lovely having you here. And remember, of course, you get to take home our pointless trophy. You don't go home empty-handed, but uh, very well done. Richard? Yeah, let's take a little look, shall we, at some of the pointless answers. Quite tough, actually. Uh, the sports one that you went for is actually only one pointless answer. It's uh, sometimes the case. But we'll start with the, uh, the county towns and cities of Florida. If you know Florida well, you'd have got a few of these, but um, they'll be obscure to some of the rest of us. Bristol, uh, Inverness, you could have Monticello, West Palm Beach, which was the, uh, the county seat of Palm Beach County. Uh, the big scorers there, Miami, Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Fort Lauderdale, Key West, uh, Kissimmee, Clearwater. Those were the big scorers there. Um, let's take a look at those sports teams now. There is only one. It's a, a major league soccer team. It's Orlando. Uh, low scorers there, Tampa Bay Rays and Tampa Bay Lightning, both would have scored you two points, and he'd got four for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are the, uh, the American football team owned by the same people who own Fulham. Uh, so they're my favourite. Uh, and Flo Rider, you'll be fascinated to hear some <laughs> Flo Rider. Hits uh, Bad Boys with Alexandra Burke. I don't like it, I love it with Robin Thick Sugar. Where Them Girls At with David Guetta and uh, Nicki Minaj. You could have had Hangover, How I Feel, I Cry in the Air, and Let It Roll as well. Very well done if you said any of those at home. Thanks very much, Richard, and thank you so much, Stephen and Phil. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today, which means it will roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us then, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. That is goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>